Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ihkam SOS, the Ramadan edition. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and with me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. How are you? Alhamdulillah, bakhair. Sheikhna, let us continue our discussion um, on the, the Ihkam by um, Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi on Som. And let us, let me ask you, what is the makruhat with Som? إن شاء الله أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين الله صل على محمد وآل محمد With regard to fasting um, as there are forbidden acts in which invalidates the fast there are also makruhat the dislikes um, in this wajib as we have this issue in, in other ibadat, in salah for example, there are makruhat in salah, uh, dislikes. Also with this regard we have, um, for the one who is in the state of fasting, he must also, uh, better for him, you know, it's makruh means sometimes less, less, less reward, less thawab. Um, sometimes you get less thawab and reward because you did this makruh, a dislike, something that Allah okay. didn't like. So there are people who are seeking for perfection in this world. Those who wish to elevate in the um, high ranks of morality and... Spirituality? Exactly. Uh, and to, per, uh, to perfect their soul and purify their soul from any um, act of uh, wrongdoing, for example, and bad manners. And of course, um, we have hukum of wajib and mustahab, and we have haram and makruh. So with regard to the fasting, there are makruhat. Let's begin with the first one. Um, the first makruh in regard to the fasting is to use eye drop okay. in, in, in the eyes. Um, that's makruh. You know, sometimes so it, it reaches the throat sometimes. Uh, so what you're saying is it doesn't invalidate the fast? It doesn't break the fast, but it's better to not do it. Exactly. It's makruh to use the eye drops okay. in, in overall. That's one of the makruhat. We try to avoid it. So we try to use it uh, in the night time or before the suhoor of, of fajr time, for example. And um, you know, the better we apply these, the, the, the more we get, of course, the rewards. Mm -hmm. And less we get uh, you know, the, um, the consequences. Now the second makruh in this regard is to use kuhul uh, in the eye, so something like the mascara, okay. but this kuhul goes inside the eye, mm -hmm. the black kuhul, and that is um, especially if it, you know, the taste reaches the, um, the, thro the throat, you know, sometimes you use that kuhul and it reaches the, the throat, the taste, so that's makruh to apply it, so if, if you want to apply it, Let's say as a, as, a, as a female, they can apply it at night. They're free to, to use it. But in the daytime, the siyam time, it's better to avoid using uh, the kuhul. The third makruh is to do anything which causes weakness to, uh -huh. to the one's body. So let's say doing hujama, for example. Um, Going to the gym? Anything that weakens the one's body. And excessive exercise. Excessive exercise, let's say. Um, whatever causes the person to um, be in the state of exhaustion and um, okay. tiredness, to avoid it. Because you are in the state of fasting, it's only 29 or 30 days mm -hmm. uh, in the year. And that's your opportunity to fast and to give your soul and body an exercise and training. So we try to avoid these things. So don't go over the top. Exactly. Or just keep it to keep minimal. Keep and it more moderate. Exactly. Uh, just a few minutes, let's say. And if you want to do, let's say, hujama or blood test, for example, and that affects you, mm -hmm. do it in the night time. Or do it after the month of Ramadan. 
if that case is able to, to be done. Um, the fourth macro um, is also to use some kind of nozzle sprays okay, nasal spray in, in, in which uh, it does not reach the throat because if it reaches the, thro the throat then it will make the, the fasting void. Right. Mm -hmm. So the nozzle spray in which does not reach the throat um, is just to use it sometimes uh, for medical purposes, for example. So if you've got a blocked nose or something. Exactly. It's better to use it at night time okay. again. So that's makruh to be used in the daytime of the month of Ramadan. Also, the fifth makruh is to smell the scent of uh, plants. Oh, okay. Um, there are particular plants which have specific smells. And uh, it is mentioned in some of the fiqh books that one of the plants which has a scent and a specific smell, that they used, in the old days, they used to smell it to make it not to feel thirsty. Oh. It just takes away the thirst, the feeling of thirst. Okay. So they smell it, and if they're feeling thirsty, that would actually go from them. Mm -hmm. So that could be one of the reasons. Okay. So we try to avoid smelling um, the plants which have uh, specific scents. Yes. Um, another number six uh, macro is for specifically for the woman to sit inside the water. Oh. So let's say it's sitting inside a pond of water, okay, a pool, or a pool, for example, and so forth. That's macro for the woman uh, to do so. Um, the seventh uh, macro is to use um, not the liquid injection, as we mentioned, the enema, which makes the the fasting void. But the makro is to use a solid injection okay. um, for the purpose of treating uh, that specific uh, illness. Uh, exactly, that location of the body. So the liquid uh, is not allowed, as I mentioned, the enema, but the solid one mm -hmm. is, is allowed, but it's makro to be used. Okay. Um, which is called al huqn al jamid. So we, tr we try to avoid it in the daytime of the month from Allah. The eighth uh, macro is to make your clothes moist and wet oh. while you're fasting, especially if you're in the, in the summertime. Yes. You need to cool down your body due to the overheat. So that's macro again, um, to make your clothes wet and moist. That's one of the macro hat. The ninth macro is to pull your teeth out and whatever causes bleeding in your mouth. So it could be to do the teeth or even gums, for example, treating your gums in the daytime when you go to the dentist, for example. So it's better to avoid the dentist either in the month of Ramadan or you go in the uh, night time if they are open. Um, otherwise, it's macro. You can, but you have to make sure that nothing goes inside your throat. No liquid goes inside your mm -hmm. throat which eventually will make your right. fast void. Yes, exactly. Um, the number 10th of the macro heart is to brush your teeth with the wet uh, miswak. Miswak, as, as mentioned as suwak, or even uh, the brush itself. So it's macro to brush mm -hmm. with to the wet. To bring moisture back into the mouth. Exactly, to bring the moisture outside moisture inside your teeth mm, and of course if you if you swallow mm. this external moist yeah. or wetness inside your throat then that will void and makes your uh, mm. psalm invalid and number 11 is to put water and rinse out the water in your mouth okay. some people like to cool yeah. themselves down so mm. they put water inside the their mouth and then they rinse out. That's macro. Mm -hmm. You have to avoid this macro. And uh, of course, if there's no reason, sometimes there's a reason the, you're doing with wudu, that's fine. You, for example, inhale or sniff mm -hmm. water in, inside your mouth, inside your, your nose, for example. That's fine. That's for the purpose of wudu, mustahab. Or even uh, you put water in your, in your mouth for the wudu. But other than that, for no reason, that's macro to do so. Um, so these are the main makruhat. We have 
two more makruh, but let me mention it. Again, one of the um, makruhat for those who are married, for the couples, um, is to avoid kissing each other. So, uh, for the for the for example, it's mainly for the for the husband, for the male, that it's makruh for him to kiss his wife while he is in the state of uh, fasting. As I've mentioned previously, that in the night time they're free. So, in the daytime, it's makruh for them to uh, do this act, um, and better to avoid it. Number 13, and the last one, whatever that triggers the lust and temptation, so we try to avoid it. If I think that looking at, let's say, even the wife, this halal look, would um, arouse the, the shahwa and mm -hmm. the lust, then I have to avoid it. Okay. So anything that raises and arouses the, um, the lust and temptation, I try to avoid its makruh. And of course, if that was with the intention of ejaculation, um, the looking or the touching, then that definitely will uh, make the psalm batil. Mm -hmm. um, as the Sayyid said, uh, as an obligatory precaution, ahwat. So it's important that we try to avoid it in this holy month, in the daytime at least, because in the nighttime you're free. But in the daytime, these are makruhat. And we try to avoid reaching uh, the situation where we commit uh, these breaking of the fasts. And eventually we end up with doing the qada and sometimes paying the kafara as well. So we try to avoid so it. Prevention is the best cure. As exactly, you exactly. Ahsan, Shaykh. Uh, you know, you've mentioned some makruhat there. What about the mustahabat? Is there anything, you know, in, in, you, know you recommend for us to do in Ramadan while fasting? Well, mustahabat in the month of Ramadan is the best time for the one to apply the mustahab and also avoid the makruh. It's, it's the best time for the one to practice. You know, get this opportunity to practice the mustahab. So you, you need to add up as a plus, as an addition to the wajib and haram, is to also refrain from uh, the makruh and practice and implement the mustahab as well. It's the best place, uh, place and time and Especially if you are in a holy shrine, let's say, mm -hmm. you're, you're in ziyarah, for example. It's the best place and best time, the month of Ramadan, to apply the mustahabbat. So, for example, uh, for the sa'im, for the one who is fasting, it's mustahab to have the perfume, utr. Okay. And in the narration, it says that it's tuhfat al-sa'im. So it's um, a gift of, for the one who is fasting, this using and applying perfume. Um, other mustahabbat, mashallah, plenty. Reading the Holy Quran, yes. we try to finish one juz of Quran one, um, as much as we can a day. Mm. Um, there are mustahab prayers, prayers in, in every night. So you have to look back, Mafatih Jan, for example, mm -hmm. to see the, 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 pray, the, exact, exact the prayers night. of the first night, mustahab. Let's yes. say two rak'ah, you, mm -hmm. you read this much of a uh, particular surah, for example, mm -hmm. you repeat that surah, and so forth. Other nights, the four rak'ah, it reaches up to eight rak'ah, for example. And so forth. We try to, as much as we can, apply these mustahabbat in this holy month so we can elevate spiritually uh, and, and gain the perfection level Excellent. as much as we can. Reading Quran, as I've mentioned, um, helping the poor, paying charity, that's the best opportunity, feeding uh, those who are in need, for example, even if those are in need, are, who are in need, um, let's say, they might be relatives. Invite them for iftar, for example. Um, those who are, for example, um, friends, family, and also um, the, the bond of kinship. Salatul Rahim, again, is the best time and, and, and month for the one to uh, link this bond and, and reconnect with his relatives. And Aqarib is the best month. Also, reading dua. The dua of iftitah, for example, every yes. night. So you have plenty of dua, mashallah, for the month of Ramadan. In Sahifa Sajjadiya, from a Sajjad alayhi salam, plenty of ad'iyya you can read. And it's the best time, I think, to refer back to these books of ad'iyya, to ponder, not only just to read the dua and, and move on. If you can't understand Arabic, get a translation of the dua, 
and try to understand the meanings of each uh, line of, of, of that dua. And of course, for the one to make his akhlaq better in this month, again, a great opportunity to make your manners and morality better and better in this month. If I used to get angry many times during the day, then in this month, I try to reduce it one by one, day by day. If I used to, let's say, billah, God forbid, swear or lie or backbite, in this month is the time where I can reduce them. And, and so forth. That's, that's the best opportunity for purification of the soul, of the mind from the bad thoughts. Sometimes people, some people have you know, corrupt thoughts about the belief, for example, in, in Ahlul Bayt, for example, in other issues of religion, they have to come and ask, uh, discuss with, with the ulama and so forth, listen to the lectures. That's the best opportunity. I think if we uh, spend a few hours a day in the month of Ramadan, on these aspects, I think by the end of the month, we'll uh, achieve a great change. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to all the viewers at home for joining us on Ihqam SOS. Uh, inshallah, today's episode specifically would have benefited you a lot. And inshallah, we pray and we hope that your Ramadan experience brings you a peak of spirituality and a peak of taqwa, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh, 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 oh,